Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on Our News. The leader of the official opposition criticizes the boundaries changes. That story straight ahead. An FNM candidate calls boundary cuts in Montague gerrymandering at its best. That story coming up in our news. Leader of the Democratic National Alliance, Branville McCartney, responds to Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner. That story is coming up straight ahead. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina McNeil. Topping news tonight, there will be 39 seats up for grabs in the upcoming general election with a new constituency created and another renamed. That new constituency is St. Barnabas, located in the center of four progressive Liberal Party strongholds. Kyle Joaquin has a breakdown and also a warning from Prime Minister Perry Christie that over the next two to three months, Bahamians will witness one of the most intense election campaigns in history. He joins me in studio. Kyle, what can you tell us? Well, Christina, that new St. Barnabas constituency lies right in the middle of these five constituencies here. Now, it actually takes two polling divisions from Fort Charlotte, two from the Bain and Grantstown constituency, two from Centerville, three from the Anglican constituency, and three from Mount Moriah. Now, it must be noted that all five of these constituencies are considered to be PLP strongholds. We caught up with Prime Minister Perry Christie today to get his thoughts on the upcoming general election. It is clear um, to everyone uh, that time is now being counted by the days. The Bahamas is currently made up of 38 constituencies, the constitutionally mandated minimum. But with the new St. Barnabas constituency, there will now be 24 constituencies in your providence, five in Grand Bahama and Bimini, and 10 throughout the family islands. Some divisions currently in Englishton, Fort Charlotte, Centerville, Baintown, and Grantstown, as well as Mount Moriah make up the new constituency. A new name also appearing in that report, Freetown, the new name for the Montague constituency. But after weeks of delays, the Boundaries Commission report was finally tabled in Parliament Wednesday night. This was Christie's description of the next two to three months. I think it's going to be an intense campaign, and I think um, there's still some developments to take place. Um, you know, and so, um, quite frankly, um, there's still work we have to do. On his to-do list, Christie said, are many groundbreaking ceremonies as well as the long-awaited opening of Bahamar and the announcement of a $200 million development in East Grand Bahama. He predicted a marked increase in voter registration as people should know it's not too long before the bell is rung. Because people should be patently aware that every step, like a new constituency's report, where the boundaries will be settled by next week, is, an, is a further step towards general elections. And um, in our system, at a certain stage, when the bell is rung, you don't have any further opportunities to be registered. Though voters just learned of this new constituency, Christie said the PLP already knows who its candidate is. And we are satisfied that we're going to be producing a top-class candidate for that constituency, and one in which, um, with the capacity to participate at any level in the governance of our country. But there's also a level of voter apathy in the country, including a push by several public figures to either not show up at the polls or spoil the ballot. Christie urged Bahamians to exercise their right to vote. Christie said he's now at the point where he will begin campaigning door to door in the constituency he's represented for decades and never lost in. We're entering that stage now where um, the campaigning will obviously begin in earnest. It has begun already, I'm sure. Um, and um, and um, someone like myself will have to soon slow down in the office and go out on the streets. Um, because again, I, I'm probably the last one to respond to the needs of our democracy, and that is people touching you and being able to say, why didn't you do this for me? Now again, Christie is urging all eligible voters to get registered, as who knows, he could be ringing the election bell very soon. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Kyle. And I know people are looking to see if there will be a spike in voter registration. Have you registered? I have, of course, right in this little constituency of Carmichael down here. That's good to know. Thanks so much. Well, opposition leader Loretta Butler-Turner is warning that boundary cuts could backfire on the Progressive Liberal Party and create confusion at the Parliamentary Registration Department. Jasmine Brown reports. Butler-Turner says the changes to the boundaries are simply a ploy to earn cheap political points in constituencies not known to vote PLP. Well, that's their objective. Um, I think that all political parties exist to govern. 
Um, but certainly it is a very desperate attempt, the fact that it's taken this long. In addition to being completed more than two months late, Butler Turner said the report is riddled with issues. Butler Turner, who once served as the MP for Montague, says changing the name of the constituency to Freetown is essentially a slap in the face for residents. She called the name change a desperate attempt by the PLP to sway votes in a historically f &M constituency. I think what they're attempting to do is obliterate the importance of the historical support that Montague has always lent to the free national movement. As for the addition of St. Barnabas as the 39th seat in the House of Assembly, Butler Turner says that coupled with the name change could spell trouble for the parliamentary registration department. According to the report, St. Barnabas is comprised of portions of Fort Charlotte, Bainstown and Grantstown, Centerville and Anglerston. The opposition leader says the department's track record with the last two referenda isn't exactly stellar. And so I think at the end of the day that this exercise could in fact um, backfire um, for, for the government. And um, in many ways, more ways than one, because um, if we remember the what appeared to be the confusion just with the referendum. We're hoping that all of these changes now um, are certainly dealt with efficiently. I, you know, that is something that I would definitely uh, want to be cautious about because we know that uh, certainly we've seen in two instances already where the parliamentary registration department has been deficient. Now that the report has been released, Butler Turner says it's now up to the opposition forces to pick the candidates they think can best defeat the PLP. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. The Free National Movement's candidate for the former Montague constituency slammed boundary cuts in that area, calling them gerrymandering gone to bed. Dionisio Diaguilar lost hundreds of dollars he spent on Montague paraphernalia before the name was changed to Freetown, but he insists the PLP government is so unpopular, a few changes won't help the party on election day. Bonnie Toot reports. Appalling and unfair is how f and candidate Dionisio Diaguilar described boundary cuts in the former Montague constituency and government's decision to change the name to Freetown. Jerry Mandarin going to bed. That's what they've done. I mean, they have scoured the island of New Providence, looked for bedrock uh, of f and support and tried to juke and jam them into one constituency so that all the f and voters, or uh, uh, they've tried to create a super f and seat in St. Anne's. And when you eventually see the final cut of St. Anne's, you will be appalled at how that twists and turns around the island of New Providence to put all the f and supporters into one constituency. Sporting an f and Team Montague t-shirt that now has to be swapped for Freetown paraphernalia, Diagular accused the government of attempting to squeeze hundreds of f and voters out of that constituency in a desperate attempt to weaken an area considered to be an f and stronghold. I can win the seat. Now, ain't no doubt about it, I can still win the seat. But they've cut out 700 voters in Blair which was predominantly an f and stronghold. So they made it more difficult for me. But this government is so unpopular. Um, it is, it, the people uh, are so upset with them. Um, they can try all they want, but when this salami hit, it could take them right out. You say the salami? Salami. Because <laughs> it ain't no tsunami, it's a salami. Diagular was ratified by the f and for Montague back in October. Since then, the businessman says he has been on the ground shoring up support. He says he had just finished campaigning in Blair when he learned last night that it had been eliminated from Freetown during the boundary cuts. The f and candidate accused government of trying to throw a curveball at him. Obviously, the area that they cut out, the 700 voters that I lost, I had just completed my canvassing of most of them, if not all of them. And um, the vast majority of them were very, very worried about the state of the country. And they felt that we were in, headed in the wrong direction. Diagular has also invested hundreds of dollars in Montague paraphernalia. However, he says he held off on spending even more just in case the constituency's commission decided to pull a fast one. They, they waited, of course, at the last minute to, to throw this curveball on me. And I probably invested a couple dollars in some T-shirts and some door hangers. 
But that is uh, minor things. It's small money. It ain't no big amount of uh, outflow. We waited uh, strategically until they cut the boundaries because we knew they would try and pull some foolishness like this. Um, they can try all they want, but it won't make a difference. I think that uh, um, they have clearly lost a lot of support, and I think that uh, they're trying to uh, give themselves a tactical advantage uh, as best as possible, but I, I don't think it's going to make a difference. It just, I think it's going to incense the people even more to vote them out. The PLP and DNA have yet to ratify candidates for the Freetown constituency. However, the Superwash owner made this vow to voters. Just remember this, Denisio de Aguilar, he washes you, presses you, entertains you, and will represent you 24-7. That's what they could expect. What a shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you want to call it Montague, Freetown, or something else, Diagular says that won't stop him from adding this constituency to the FNM's win column on election night. Reporting for our news, I'm Vonnie Toot. Well, leader of opposition business in the Senate, Branville McCartney, says he is willing to step down from that post following claims by opposition leader Loretta Butler Turner that he threw her under the bus. He says he contacted the Long Island MP to ask her what would lead her to make such an assertion. Giorgio Bain reports. Leader of the Democratic National Alliance, Senator Branfield McCartney, says he's unclear about comments made by Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner that he threw her under the bus. According to McCartney, he's willing to tender his resignation if necessary. In one of her first moves as leader of the official opposition, Butler-Turner moved to have McCartney appointed as the leader of opposition business in the Senate. This sparked much speculation of a coalition between the Long Island MP and the Democratic National Alliance. However, McCartney quickly dismissed those rumors, leading some to believe that he had thrown Butler Turner under the bus. If she wish, um, I can certainly tender my resignation. Uh, but I'd like some explanation as to what do you mean by throwing you under the bus, because that is something that we didn't do. But I am ready and willing, if she wished to take that route, um, uh, tender my resignation from the Senate. According to McCartney, there was never any conversation about a deal for Butler Turner to join the DNA in exchange for his Senate appointment. When I was asked to be a senator, and in particular the leader of opposition business in the Senate, uh, that was on the understanding that we would work as opposition forces. Nothing more, nothing less. There was no type of plan, there was no type of coalition, there was no deal. McCartney said it would be wrong for Butler Turner to paint the picture that any conversation about a coalition ever took place. According to McCartney, the opposition leader never even mentioned it. Ms. Butler Turner has never offered herself to be part of the DNA. As a matter of fact, um, uh, none of the other persons have offered themselves to be part of the DNA. So that was never um, a question, no. never a question. And of course, uh, if, if they wanted to put that position to the DNA, uh, there's a process. I don't act unilaterally. I don't act on my own. Anything that is done regarding the party, I have to get the permission from the party. McCartney said it would not be a problem for him to hand in his resignation letter, but he would like Butler Turner to explain to him how he might have thrown her under the bus. There's one bus I know about. That's called the big green machine we have out there. If I were to throw anyone under that bus, they would not live to tell the story. Um, with all respect, I truly don't know what Loretta Butler Turner is speaking about. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgia Bain. In other news, after years of failed contract negotiations, the Labor Minister says he is now recommending that government bypass the Bahamas Customs Immigration and Allied Workers Union to pay those workers sums previously agreed to by both sides. Shane Gibson told Parliament last night that there remains no bargaining agreement in place for those workers as government and the union have reached a stalemate over several issues, including the union's desire to have clerical staff paid uniform and shift allowances, even though those workers do not wear uniforms or work shifts. Gibson indicated that customs officers have run out of patience with their union, and since they've expressed in writing a lack of confidence in union president Sloan Smith, 
Government has released a form to be filled out by officers who wish to receive their money during their next pay period. Further, the petition which was forwarded to my ministry by customs officers calls for the government to pay customs officers the sums agreed to during the negotiations. The government has no objection in the absence of a signed industrial agreement to paying customs officers the increases in salary and uniform allowances as agreed during those negotiations. Though no request was received from immigration officers, they will also be paid if they so desire. The letter came nearly two weeks after Gibson said he had recommended that the officers be paid. He says the law does not allow one side to unilaterally take away benefits from employees, but government can give benefits at any time. I'm still hopeful that an industrial agreement will be signed between the Bahamas uh, Customs, Immigration and, and Allied Workers Union and the government, which will include payments already made. And the government of the Bahamas has set aside the relevant fun funds to pay these increases. So any uniformed officer of the said departments who wishes to be paid may make a written application to the, for the payment to the respective human resources department. And upon receipt of the written request, the payment would be made in your next pay packet or not later than March 29th, 2017. Still to come on our news, a look at voter registration numbers on Grand Bahama, plus why a group of educators say you should spoil your ballot on election day. That's coming up when our news returns.